What the hell is even that? Wokeness comes with a lot of side effects, one of which is the inability to use common sense. This biological woman, for example, transitioned to a man and now refuses to believe she's pregnant, even as her doctor insists to her that she is. As always, stick around to the end for the recap, this week's woke news and much, much more. I recently transitioned to being a guy and I had a doctor's appointment recently. That doctor said I was pregnant. Doesn't make any sense because I'm obviously a guy. So I'm going to a second doctor now to get a second opinion and uh, I'll keep you guys updated. Dylan, thank you. You are six weeks pregnant. Uh, that's not possible on the man. Before you became Dylan, uh -huh, you must have been Tasha. And Tasha must have been having relations in order to become pregnant. She did, and then I became a man. Well, now that you are a man, uh -huh, you're going to have to jump back in a position as a woman and become a mother. Nope. Nope. I'm not going to be a mother, and I'm not pregnant. That doesn't make any sense. How can a man be pregnant? Well, before your transition, um, things like that just don't go away. And like I said, when you transition, that doesn't just go away. How is a man pregnant? That doesn't make any sense. Well, well technically, you're not a man. I am a man. I'm sorry to inform you. You have woman body parts. That's yes. And you can give birth, and you can... How dare you? Where is your bedside manner? I tried to have bad side manners, and I tried to tell you as a doctor that we had been going over the charts, and the chart states that you are six weeks pregnant. How would I look walking around as a pregnant man? Do you know the ridicule I would face? Now I just hope this is satire, otherwise I truly feel sorry for whoever impregnated such a muppet. Not to mention that baby's definitely going to have an IQ of 50 if it's lucky. But sticking on the theme of people without common sense, Here's a very long and very nonsensical monologue as to why baristas should make as much as doctors. Saying if baristas should make as much money as doctors is just a more polite way of asking if baristas should have the same quality of life as physicians, as doctors. Because framing it to make it just about money is nicer than just openly admitting that some people should have better lifestyles than others simply because their job is X. And before you say it, like, yeah, I know that we need incentives for people to do certain jobs, but especially with healthcare where it's literally life and death, I would hope that the incentive for people to go into those fields is not because of the pay. I would hope that the pay is just kind of seen as a bonus and that this is truly their passion considering that they're going to have their patients' lives in their hands. And when I break down why people say that we need those incentives for specifically a field like a doctor, a lot of people fall back on well, it's so much school. Well, it's so much time. Okay, then the incentives should reflect that. We should give them alternative schedules. We should give them free school. We should give people UBI so that they don't have to worry about that as they go through said school. Making upper education free, do you know how many more people would be able to actually follow through with their interest in medicine if it weren't for the cost? But yeah, I don't think that baristas should have an inherently worse quality of life simply because they are baristas and not doctors. It's the part where that's my problem. So you now this shouldn't require any debate, but I'll make it simple for her. Most people can make their coffee at home but can't operate on their own internal organs at home. Doctors should make significantly more than baristas. But sadly, logic just doesn't connect with some people. Like this fella who insists that it slash its pronouns are most suitable for her. Or this biological male who thinks straight people need to stop whining about trans people in the bathroom. Let's listen to what they have to say. For some reason, you can't use neopronouns to refer to me and you need a word that you already know how it fits into the English language, you may refer to me as it, its. They, them makes me super dysphoric. It, its is cool. Non-noun neo-pronouns are still my preferred, especially the ones that keep the E sound, like E or Z or V. But if you need a pronoun like while you're learning those, or if for some reason neo-pronouns are inaccessible to you, then it, its. Of course, if you're not using my pronouns just because you don't want to or you think they're invalid. I think that you're nuts. That's what I think. See, here's the issue with that. Trans women are women. That's the issue. Now, you can choose to not be okay with that. Yeah, that's your choice. But then you know what you can do? Not use public facilities. Wait till you get home. Only use single stall restrooms. The things that you tell us to do, you can do that then if it bothers you so much to possibly be in the bathroom with a trans person who's in a stall with a closed door. If that bothers you that much, 
Then wait till you get home. No. No, I don't think I will. Now, most people typically don't take advice from mentally ill folks, so good luck convincing straight people to participate in your delusion. Meanwhile, the Oompa Loompa who expects us to learn all these useless pronouns really needs to think again. If you ask me, she isn't just stupid, she's attention-seeking to the max. And if you think the next generation is safe from losing their minds, think again. Watch as this teacher reads out her new version of the Pledge of Allegiance. All right, I pledge my heart. So typical gay camp. One camp. Full of pride. Indivisible. Affirmation and equal rights for all. Affirmation and equal rights for all. Watch your head. Now, if you've ever wondered what woke indoctrination looks like, look no further. Why any grown adult, gay or not, needs to explain their sexual orientation to school children is beyond me and I'd pull my kids out of that school in a heartbeat. And now we have yet another school, this time in Canada, that's promoting this poisonous propaganda. K to three, you got the basics, bi-gender, cisgender, demigender, what the fuck is that? Androgender, femme, fluid, orgogender, intersex, jerks, what is that one? What is, I can't even pronounce that. Off gender, pan gender, gender questioning, gender assignment, sub gender, yes, it's transgender. Well, I don't even know what that one is. It is just Chinese gender, what the fuck? And that right there is what your kids are learning at the expense of math and science. The funny thing is, I didn't even see heterosexuality on there. But let's face it, this is just a book designed to confuse young minds. And I think we can all agree it has no place in a kindergarten classroom. And now for our final clip, we have a group of Democrat protesters mourning the passing of a bill that bans trans men from girl bathrooms and DEI in schools. And that's because we are hurting and we join our communities and we marginalize communities and vulnerable communities through this process as we just came out of the Senate before that passed um, HB 257 and HB 261 and there may be really fast to get to the governor's desk. Honestly, the only thing we should be mourning here is the loss of common sense, because both bills make complete sense to anyone with a brain. And they can mourn and cry all they want, but as long as people keep pushing back on woke nonsense, we'll see more progress like this. And I, for one, want to congratulate Utah on bringing sanity back. But let's rewind. I hope I'm not the only one who finds it strange that so many folks on the far left seem to lack any common sense. Sure, there's dumb people for every political affiliation, but I typically don't see conservatives denying their own biology, thinking baristas should earn the same salaries as doctors, or let's not forget, mourning the inability for grown men to share bathrooms with women and children. Everyone knows education's important, and as we've seen today, the emphasis has clearly shifted towards teaching about woke values like sexual orientation and different genders' identifications. That's why I wouldn't be surprised if the next generation's IQ drops even further and continues this trend of idiocracy. Now on that note about our education system, I recently came across some disturbing news. US Vice President Kamala Harris announced that the federal government would be launching a new work-study program that allows students to get paid to register people to vote, be it friends, classmates, family or strangers on the street. Now, for those who don't know, Gen Z and millennial voters are absolutely a key demographic for the election, and they've been strategically chosen for this programme because those two demographics tend to vote more in favour for the Democrat Party. And what they're essentially trying to do is boost their party's votes through paying off those college kids. And so if you're like me and don't like to see taxpayer money being used to buy votes from newly indoctrinated, woke college students, be sure to spread the word and share this video. As always, thanks for supporting this channel and I'll see you all next week.